on Reaper and the Resin Valley Boys. Let's give them all a big hand. One more time. Come on. See my old friend Jeff Dale up here. Jeff and I um, had a mutual opponent in different races. He run against Jim Westmoreland. You know, Milk Drop Mo, uh, Westmoreland Dairy Air used to be on city council, and Jeff run against him one term, and then a few years later, I ran against him, and I was just telling uh, uh, Jeff that uh, Jim Westmoreland has apparently seen the light. He is now the leading owner of Topless Bars in London, England, and the family hasn't made so much money since they sold the cows <laughs> and got out of the dairy business. Uh, so there's hope for anybody, even old political rednecks. If you don't know much about me, I've been sentenced to 160 years in the Texas penitentiary. I quickly made trustees, only had 80 years to do, and I've been out 30 years, so I'm a lot older than I look. Uh, I also became a jailhouse lawyer, and I reformed my sentence from 20 consecutive eight-year sentences to 20 concurrent eight-year sentences. So I only had eight to do. I did that in four years, four months, and 17 days. And I have been doing the prison show on KPFT for the last 25 years. Can you imagine surviving 25 years of Pacifica politics, nothing short of a miracle. And uh, uh, every two, every week, I go on for a couple and sometimes three hours, and tell convicts the information they need to know that the rest of the media does not cover. I do other things. I have sued Houston Police Department more than anybody else, and I have always won those cases. I was arrested in 1982 for calling two police officers a name unbecoming of their relationships with their mothers. And that case went all the way to the Supreme Court of the United States, whereupon eight of the nine justices said they thought everybody knew about cops and their mamas and didn't understand why I got arrested. They gave me $50 a minute for the inconvenience of going to jail and you taxpayers paid my lawyer $650,000 for defending my rights. I really appreciate that. Uh, uh, we had an awful good time in Las Vegas on the money you gave us. <laughs> I also have been arrested 19 times. And in my Supreme Court case, I said I would rather get arrested than somebody whose family wouldn't understand. I would rather that I get arrested than somebody who can't afford to spend time in jail. I would rather that I get arrested than somebody who is afraid to go to jail. And I will confront any police officer under any circumstances, violating anybody's rights, any place, any time, anywhere. So now when the police officer put my license number in their computer, it says, call your sergeant, call your sergeant, call your sergeant, call your sergeant before you screw up. This is my lecture season. I just yesterday uh, was up, uh, yesterday morning I was up in um, Huntsville, Texas, lecturing a couple of sociology classes about prisons. The statistics that are now put out by the Department of Justice is prisons cost. $34 billion last year to staff and operate. That is half of the money we spent on whatever wars that George Bush has gotten us into. And we're going to do that again next year, and we're going to do that again the year after, and we're going to do that again after. We're losing an enormous amount of good tax reservoir revenue because we are forcing an underground, underground market of marijuana off the tax rolls. It's all underground. At least five states that they admit to, the largest cash crop in those states is marijuana and hemp. They admit to that. And I would suggest that their statistics for the other far, 45 
we're weak and shaky, or there's more than that. Because the underground economy to do that, that's why I come up here, I mean, I've got 46 years, 3 months, and 19 days of being drug and alcohol free, and I'm standing up here defending the rights of people to use without fear of the law. And why the hell would I do that? Because that position is the correct one. It's the only position that makes sense in a group of people that call themselves a free society. That's the only thing that makes sense. And let me tell you something. I'm not just in favor oh, of use and possession. I'm in favor of distribution and sale. Should be also legalized. And why is that? Because one of the things I do is I protect the adult industry. And that, you know, a dildo in Texas is legal to own, to possess, and to use with a consenting adult, all right? But to sell and promote it, it is illegal. That doesn't make sense. Where the hell are you going to get happiness if you can't buy a goddamn dildo? And where the hell are you going to get uh, help the relaxation if you can't buy your dope? And if nobody can sell it, you can't buy it. None of that makes sense. Now, my Aunt Agnes, who had this dread fear of glaucoma in Centerville, Texas, she tried growing her own dope. She was a church across on one side and a Baptist church on the other. She said her dope didn't like pianos. It grew better on church across that where they didn't have any pianos. But she experimented with that. And she said, the best thing to grow your dope in is turkey shit. So I went down and I copyrighted Aunt Agnes' Turkey Shed Dope. When it becomes legal, I'm going into business. Don't forget my number. It's 713-523-6969. How the hell can you forget a number like that? I love you. Have a wonderful time. We're being rewarded with beautiful weather. Remember the rainstorms last year? Well, being hardy has its rewards. Thank you, Mr. Ray Hill. Let's give it one more hand, Mr. Ray Hill. Okay, I understand here in just a minute or so we will have Sean Reaper and the Resin Valley Boys. Remember, all these people, I'm not paying them. You know, none of the bands, none of the speakers. This is people talking about you and your freedom. This is people talking about your future. I urge you to support the vendors back here. They keep this thing happening. Get your beer. Get your book from Ed Rosenthal.